and then we're going to get started. So we're working on our 14-step listing presentation, and, and what we've covered so far is phone interview. And quick recap on that. Phone interview is an opportunity for you to reach out to the owner of the home prior to your listing appointment and ask questions that will enable you to be better prepared for the appointment. And that's script. That's exactly what you're telling the seller when you're calling them. Angel, I just need to spend maybe 15 minutes with you on the phone to ask questions in order to be better prepared for our appointment tomorrow at four o'clock. Uh, step number two is you're going to prepare your CMA and you're going to prepare a supply and demand analysis. And we went deep into what you're looking for when you're preparing the CMA and when you're preparing the supply and demand analysis. And we'll review those later on in steps 12 and 13. All right, step number three is confirm the appointment. And that simply means you're calling them the day of the appointment. Good morning, Joy, John Dietz, Keller Williams Realty, confirming our appointment for later today at four o'clock. Joy says, yep, we're on, yes. awesome. Hey, by the way, when we get together today at four o'clock, are you gonna be ready to list your home? Not sure. Okay, awesome, so I'll see you at four o'clock. Now, what if she said yes? I'm bringing a pen. Yeah, <laughs> I love that, Joy. So my answer is, I like hers, and my answer is, awesome, I'll see you at four o'clock. By the way, if she says no, what's the response? Awesome, I'll see you at four o'clock. There you go, you got it. Okay, now you're gonna call again when you're on your way to confirm the appointment. So now you've confirmed twice. Now remember, three questions that every seller is asking themselves about you. By the way, every buyer is asking them these same three questions. Do you care about me? Can I trust you? And do you know what you're doing? And we are demonstrating that we care about them simply by calling ahead of time and confirming the appointment. That's professional. That's how professionals behave. And when we're on the way to the appointment, we're gonna call again. So it's simply, hey Alex, John Dietz, I'm on my way, I will be at your home at four o'clock sharp. Unless I run into traffic, and if that happens, I'll give you a quick call and let you know. Oh. Again, go, thank you, Alex. Again, you're demonstrating that you care. You're demonstrating that they can trust you. All right, step number four, get on the listing channel. This is mindset. It's all about being prepared mentally in order to do a great job. The first thing I'm gonna do in order to be on the right mindset is to make sure I give myself enough time to get to the appointment. If my appointment's at four and it takes 20 minutes to get there, I'm not gonna leave at 3.30 because if I run into traffic, my mindset is shot. I'm going to turn off my phone. I'm not gonna answer the phone. It might be somebody calling me to, I don't know, complain about something. And if that were the case, how's my mindset? Not good. I'm gonna turn off the radio. I'm especially not gonna to listen to talk radio. I'm not gonna do anything to get in the wrong mindset. I'm going to practice affirmations and I'm going to visualize a great result. Um, if you're driving, don't close your eyes to visualize. Not a good idea. All right, step number five, Kodak moment. <laughs> And we had an interesting uh, conversation on Friday because there was a few people who thought that means we're taking pictures. No, Kodak moment is just another word for making a great first impression. It's that moment you greet them at the door. And step number six is tour the home. So this is where we're gonna pick up today. And I'm gonna start with Kodak moment. And I just need somebody to raise their hand and say, John, I'll role play with you. And we're gonna walk through touring the house. So use the little hand button. Tamika, let's go. So I'm at the front door, it's four o'clock. I've got my backpack with all of my listing tools over my shoulder. I've got a, I've got a notebook and a pen and I'm ready to take notes. And I'm simply going to knock on the door. 
Tamika opens the door. Hi, Tamika, John Dietz, Keller Williams Realty. We had an appointment today at four o'clock and it's four o'clock. May I come in? Welcome. Yes, come on in. Perfect. Now, if I just walk in the door without Tamika inviting me in the door, that's called breaking and entering. So don't do that. Wait to be invited in. And I am going to dress professional. Dress shirt, tie, sport coat. I'm paying attention to the details. Little things matter. You only have 10 seconds to make a great first impression. So now I'm standing in the doorway of Tamika's home. And you can take yourself off mute again, Tamika. Wow, Tamika, you have an absolutely beautiful home. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you, it's my first purchase. Yeah, love, love, love your home. Hey, by the way, before I go any further, would you like me to take off my shoes? Um, that would be love you. lovely. Thank you for asking, I really appreciate that. Of course, glad to do it, Tamika. Now what I would like to do is I'd like to set my things down at the kitchen table. And then if you could, could you please take me on a tour of your home? Absolutely, start in the kitchen. Okay, so. cool, cool. So Tamika, put yourself on mute again, let's talk. So by setting my things down at the kitchen table, what am I doing? Anybody? You're making sure that she understands you're sitting there after the tour is over. That's it. Simple. Success is simple. It's not easy. Do not ask, where would you like to sit? You're going to end up in the living room, sitting on a couch with them across the room. Business is done at the kitchen table. We have dinner, formal dinners with family at the dining room table. If any of you still use your dining room. And if I'm sitting down to have a business conversation, it's at the kitchen table. That's why we're sitting at the kitchen table. Simple. All right, Tamika, we're back at it. So Tamika, as we're touring your home, I'm going to ask lots of questions and I'm going to take lots of notes because this is the information I'm going to use to help you sell your home. Okay. Perfect. So as Tamika is giving me a tour, I am writing notes and I am speaking out loud so she knows what I'm writing down. In other words, Wow, beautiful updated hardwood floors, crown molding, vaulted ceilings, plantation shutters. Wow, you have a beautiful home, Tamika. Love, love, love your home. Thank you, thank you very much. Absolutely. Now guys, how do you think Tamika feels right now? And I'm not talking about Tamika the role player, I'm talking about Tamika the home owner. How does Tamika feel right now? Feels, feels comfortable with you. Comfortable. Comfortable. Appreciated. Appreciated. Absolutely. Think she has a great house. Yes. <laughs> Guys, are we proud of our homes? Yes. And how would you feel if a real estate agent came in and started walking around the house and said, okay, uh, dated carpet, uh, wallpaper needs to go, uh, dated kitchen, they're using this tonality and they're talking like this. How does that homeowner feel? You're not oh, taking a personal no. interest. Unprofessional. The realtors uh, telling them that they think it's gonna be hard to sell their house. All of the above. So if you're taking notes and I know you are, write this down, like their house. And I want you to write this down as well. There is always something to like. So if the house is dated, I'm going to find something positive to say. And I'm only pointing out what I like. I am not walking through the property to give them staging advice. That comes much later. I am not making suggestions. That comes much later. I am simply touring the home and asking questions, taking notes, and liking their home. So Tamika, take yourself off mute, let's keep going. <clears throat> so Tamika, I know that when we spoke on the phone, you mentioned that you've lived in your home for 15 years, and I can see that the home is approximately 30 years old. Just curious, do you know how old the roof is? Uh, the roof is 10 years old. 
Okay, perfect. So roof was replaced in 2010, taking notes. How about the AC system, Tamika? How old is that? That's five years old. Okay, wow, that's awesome. Good to know. Okay, and I can see that you have brand new windows. Love your windows, by the way. When did you replace those? Yo, those are brand new impact windows. They're about less than two years old. Okay, so brand new impact windows um, re installed in 2018. It's important, I'm writing it down exactly the way I'm going to market it in the MLS. When realtors write new impact windows, what does that mean? Guys, it's not a trick question. This year. It means, it means they, were, they, were, they, were installed yes, they were installed yesterday. Yesterday. That's what it means. And they weren't. So I am writing it down exactly the way I'm going to market this property in the, in the MLS. That's important. Hey, Tamika, how about the hot water heater? How old is that? That is a tankless hot water heater. So that's less than two years as well. Love that. Good stuff. Okay. Now we're making our way through the home. Two most important rooms in the house. The kitchen. kitchen and the bathroom. Kitchen and the master bathroom. Right? All right, so again, wow, you have a beautiful master bathroom. Love the travertine floors. Love the marble ca um, countertops. I'm using the wrong words here, guys, you know that. Um, this is absolutely beautiful. Gonna be, gonna have a lot of fun selling your home. This is absolutely beautiful. Walk into the kitchen, holy cow. Script, holy cow. Wow, another script. I love your kitchen. Another script. Beautiful granite countertops, maple cabinets, travertine floors, stainless steel appliances. I'm taking notes and I'm liking Tamika's home. Now we're going to tour the rest of the home. It's going to go very much like this. I'm asking lots of questions. I'm taking lots of notes and I'm getting into detail. In other words, measure the rooms. Measure how large the family room is. You uh, measure how large the living room is, the master bedroom, it's important. These are details. And this is being a professional. Go outside, even if it's like 100 degrees outside, go outside, tour the outside of the home. Pay attention to details. Ask questions about the location. If they back to water, look to see what type of boats are on the canal. Look to see how big the boats are. And if you don't know, ask. In other words, Tamika, I noticed that there's boats on the water. Beautiful, by the way. Just curious, do you have unlimited access to the Atlantic Ocean or are there any fixed bridges you need to go under? Yes, there's a fixed bridge on Federal okay. um, before Atlantic. Okay, good to know. So, can I sell this home? I'm not talking to Tamika, I'm talking to you guys. Can I sell this home to someone with a 48 foot Hatteras? By the way, if you're not sure, a 48 foot Hatteras is about 30 foot no. tall, at no. least with a fly no. bridge and all of the equipment, it's probably close to 40 feet tall. Am I getting no. under a fixed bridge? No, no. no. I'm no. not. Is that going to make a difference in how we market the property? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Now, I know on the West Coast, and I believe it or not, I don't know this here. I know on the West Coast of Florida, there were parts of the Tampa Bay area that I sold real estate in that had title issues. In other words, if you went out and you came back in at the wrong time, you were high and dry and spending the night there. Does that exist here? Yes, it does. Yeah. Okay. Yes, it does. Yeah. Is that important to know? Yeah. Yes. Well, it is or it isn't. Which is it, guys? It is. Yes, it is. it's important to know. Now, how are you going to know if you don't ask? You're not. 
Now, you could say, well, I know the area, so I know what I'm dealing with. Still ask. Ask the homeowner. What if they don't, what if they have a different opinion than you do? It's important to ask. All right, how are we doing so far, guys? Are we good? Sure. Thumbs good. up? Cool. Yeah. yeah, great, great, great. All right, we're gonna end up at the kitchen table and I wanna get into the end of conversation today. So uh, we're gonna move right to that. We've ended the tour, you've taken lots of notes, you like their home and you're sitting at the kitchen table. Start with where would you like me to sit? If you're thinking, holy cow, John is really teaching basics. Absolutely, it's important. If you just sit down at the kitchen table and you sat in somebody's favorite chair, the whole time you're there, they're thinking, oh my gosh, he's in my chair, he's in my chair, oh my gosh, he's in my chair. They're not paying attention to you. Ask where they would like you to sit. Make sure you can see both parties at the same time. If I'm sitting at the table and I've got a couple that I'm speaking to, and one is on my left and the other is on my right, and I have to turn my head to talk to, this is fun on Zoom, I have to turn my head to the left to talk to this individual, my back is to the individual on my right. That is not good. And if they sit like that, because they may, when they ask you where the, you would, when you ask where you, they would like you to sit, and you sit down, they just may sit down opposite ends of the table. Ask, ask them to move. Just take charge. Would you guys mind if you sat across the table so I could see both of you at the same time? Simple question. All right. If there's a large vase of flowers or some decorative piece in the middle of the table, ask them if it would be okay to move it. That's okay. You don't want to be doing this as you're talking to them because you can't see past this thing that's in the middle of the table. And my, typically my script is, guys, is it okay if we move this? Because if we don't, I might knock it over. <laughs> ask, if they ask you if you would like something to drink, the answer is yes. Okay. If they don't, ask for a glass of water. Now, one of the reasons I'm asking for a glass of water is because I want to get them used to saying yes. One of the other reasons I'm asking for a glass of water is because when I'm talking a lot, I'm going to get thirsty. By the way, that's not good. By the end of the listing appointment, if that entire glass of water is gone, that means I talked too much and they didn't talk enough. I want most of that water left. That means I talked less than they did. You guys tracking with me so far? Mm -hmm. Begin the conversation. Bill, Michael, Eddie, Angel, Alex, thank you so much for the opportunity to meet with you today. It is always an honor to meet with someone and discuss the possibility of the Dietz team representing them in the sale of their home. Now, before we get started, can I share my mission statement with you? Yes. Awesome. Thank you. Guys, pay attention. It's important. Say thank you. Holy cow. Thank you. My mission, <clears throat> whenever I meet with a potential client, is to meet their goals and exceed their expectations. Now, because of that mission statement, whenever I meet with a potential seller, one of three things typically happens. One of those three things will happen today. Now, by the way, I'm slowing down because I want you guys to get this word for word. It's all script that I've internalized at a level where I don't have to think. Now, in real life, what does that sound like? So because of that mission statement, whenever I meet with a potential seller, one of three things typically happens. One of those three things will happen today. Either number one, they understand and appreciate the benefits that I have to offer and they hire me, which is awesome. The second thing that occasionally happens is they may not hire me and that's not so awesome. And then the third thing that happens every so often is I may choose not to represent them in the sale of their home. I'm pausing for a reason. Why do you think I'm pausing? I might ask you, be why would you turn the listing down? That's it, right there, yeah. Alex. I want to hear why would you turn the listing down? 
And that's a great question and I'm so glad you asked. And you're actually gonna really like the answer. You see, if I feel that a seller has a goal or an expectation that I cannot meet or exceed, I would rather turn the opportunity down today than let you down six months from now. Does that sound fair? Yes, it does. Okay, cool. Guys, it's 8.53, last seven minutes for questions. Go. John? Yeah. First question that I have for you. In the beginning, when you sat down, actually when you walked in, um, you asked them um, whether or not they were ready to go ahead and list their house with you. That was in the confirmation call. Correct. Correct. What was the yeah. reasoning behind that? So I know. Okay, that, it's simply enough, nothing more, nothing less. That's it, just so I know. Okay. And by the way, the exact words were, are you gonna be ready to list your home? Not, are you gonna be ready to list your home with me? Words matter. Okay, understood. All right, okay, so when we get together today, later at four o'clock, Alex, are you gonna be ready to list your home? Okay. Yeah. okay. Next question I don't know. for you. <laughs> Alex, go. Okay. Um, Guys, raise you your hands because I think there's going to be more than one or two questions. So hit the little hand raise button. All right, Alex, go. When you are touring some houses, some of them aren't those big, uh, that big of a house. How do you handle tight spaces like you're walking down the hallway where there are three bedrooms and it's a tight area? How do I handle that? Yeah. I mean, it okay. gets kind of tight and uncomfortable if everybody's clogged in together. Well, there's only one person take me on a tour. I'm not having, so if it's uh, a couple, if it's a couple with um, one of their kids, I don't have three or four people taking me on a tour. It's just one person. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's actually a good question. And I'm really glad that you asked because I, I really don't want to go on a tour with 20 people. If uh, there's two or three people that I'm meeting with, I'm going to ask the other two to hang out at the kitchen table while Susie gives me a tour of the house. Bill, go, you got your hand raised. And then Tamika, I think you were getting ready to say something. You can so jump in after Bill. Hi, uh, yes, Jim. Uh, you mentioned about the wow and the wow kitchen, wow, you know, the law of their home. When it comes to smells, like pet smell, smoke smell, how do you deal with the smell? Yeah, so we're gonna talk about that once you've decided to hire me. Sorry guys, it's so my, my embedded commands are so ingrained. I'm using it even when I'm talking to you right now. <laughs> We're gonna talk about that later once you've decided to hire me. Uh, I'm not going to do anything to stage your home, including making suggestions in reference to cat odors or dog odors until after you've decided to hire me. And absolutely, we're going to talk about that. We're gonna talk about everything that we're gonna to need to do in order to get your home sold. One of the questions that I would ask to help them self-discover is, Bill, what do you love about buying a new car? The, the smell of a new car. Yeah, of course, me too. And what's one of the first things that buyers notice or people notice when they walk into our homes? The smell. Yeah, and based on that, what do you think we should do? Fix it. Tell me how you would do that. All right, now you don't have to go deeper, but do you see how I'm handling that situation? Yes? Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. cool. All right, um, looking for hands raised. I don't see any, so just go if you have a question. Tamika, you're up. I, yeah, I had a question. So <clears throat> once they say, what do you mean you choose to hire me? Um, I know there's a script for that. I don't remember it as of right now. Could you reenact that script? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if, a, if, a, if someone has a goal or an expectation that I cannot meet or exceed, I would rather turn the opportunity down today, Tamika, than let you down six months from now. Thank you. Okay, there's a, there's a part two to that, guys, that you can use. Sometimes I will, sometimes I won't. You see, the good news is, that means I'm not going to tell you anything you want to hear just to list your house. You see, if you were meeting with another real estate agent, and because I know, and I'll do this if I know they have appointments after me because I'm going to set my competition up to fail. If you meet with enough real estate agents, you're going to meet with someone who will tell you anything you want to hear just to list your home. You see, that's, and that more than likely would be a win-lose. And the real estate agent's the one who won. You lost. 
because your home didn't sell. The agents still got buyer leads. They sold properties because of your listing, just not yours. So the agents still won and you lost. That's a win-lose and that doesn't work for me. It's either win-win or no deal, Stephen Covey. And I'm never gonna tell you something that you wanna hear just to put a sign in your front yard. I will tell you what you need to hear in order to get your home sold. So I have a question. Yep. We're still on tour of the home. I think I'm still just wondering um, the conversation you're going to have, let's say it's a really bad smoke smell or could be even worse, just really, really bad. You know, it's a situation it needs to be fixed. Are you having that conversation in these steps before the listing is signed? No, you're not. No, like no. What, well, Angel, 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 let me go. Let me go back. I'm sorry. Let me. I didn't listen to you. I'm sorry. Okay. Your, your words matter, right? The question was, am I going to talk about this before the listing agreement is signed? The answer to that is yes. Okay. The answer to am I going to talk about this as we're touring the home? The question, no, no I'm not. Okay. And by the way, okay. if the house is the house is a wreck. Somebody's making eggs. Frank, you're scrambling eggs and we all know it. Hit you. My bad. <laughs> I love that. By the way, you just made me hungry. Shoot. <laughs> um, if the house is a wreck, I'm not going to spend 30 minutes touring the home. It's going to take 10. And I'm not, wow, wow, wow. No, guys, don't do that. I'm just taking notes. Open, open living area. Uh, vaulted ceilings, uh, um, kitchen, um, I don't know, find something to talk about, but I'm not, not going to go, wow, how beautiful is your home? I'm just taking okay. notes, right? That's it. I'm just taking notes and I'm talking and I'm still okay. asking questions. I'm just not wow, wow, wow. That's no. Okay. All right. One more question and we're going to rock and roll. Let's go. All right, forget the questions. Give me an aha. One aha. What did you hear? What did you learn? What's the one thing you can do? Here's a great question. What's the one thing you can do that would take your real estate business to the next level? When I mean the next level, I mean massively big, massively successful. I have one. Uh, asking if asking when you confirm an appointment if they're ready to list their home. Okay, like that. One more. What's one thing you could do based on what you've heard in the last three days, four days, that will take your business to the next level? And I mean massively successful. What's the one thing? For I me, I so. felt like it was being more detailed, um, learning more. Like, for instance, understanding um, if they live by a, a waterfront, um, both sizes, uh, the bridge. You know, these are things I didn't think about. I'm from New York. I'm like, okay, so this is something different. We need to learn details. Got it. Got it. That Good was job. That Good they got for me. I, I, like I like getting okay. getting rid of the competition, the competition up front, up front with, the with the selling the win-win. Win. Love, that. Love that. Guys, I know guys, we got, we got major, major. Hold on. Hold on. Out. Out. Hold on one Hold second, on guys. guys. I don't know who to mute, so, so I'm muting everybody. everybody. <laughs> All right. Wow. There was a really good response to that. I, I asked, I asked the right question because a lot of you had answers. So I'm going to stay with you. Uh, raise your hand and then take yourself off mute. And if you would put yourself back on mute afterwards, what's the one thing in the last four days that you've learned that's going to take your business to the next level. And I mean, massively successful. And Michael said to, set your competition up for failure. Good answer, Michael. Uh, and Marcia, did you have your hand up? You're, you're muted, Marcia. I got a quick um, question, John. No, One second, I, Frank. No, I, I really need to learn the, the scripts. I think if I learn these scripts, 
it will really take my business to the next level. All right, if everybody else didn't hear that, you need to write that down because there are a lot of right answers to this question and that one is absolutely at the top of my list. What's the one thing that I can do to take my business to the next level? Master my listing presentation. And I mean at a level where you've got it internalized to a point where you don't even have to think. It's just automatic. Frank. Yeah, that one script that you gave, John, I think is a really powerful script because nowadays, you know, you're always going to go up against, you know, at least probably two to three minimum, you know, other agents, nine times out of 10. Yep. The one where you, the, can you give me that one again, where you set the other agent up to fail? Yeah. So Frank, I know that you're going to be meeting with other agents and, and chances are you're going to meet with someone who really needs to list your home. You see, the good news for you is I don't need to list your house. I, I want to, and that's why I'm here. You see, if I needed to list your home, though, I would tell you anything that you wanted to hear just to put a sign in your front yard. And that's a win-lose. It's a win-lose because the real estate agent wins because they're going to get buyer leads from your listing and they're going to use those buyer leads to sell homes, not, just not yours. You lose because your home didn't sell. And for me, it has to be win-win or no deal. So I'm not going to tell you anything that you want to hear just to put a sign in your front yard. What I will do is tell you what you need to hear in order to get your home sold. Excellent. Okay. You're a rock star, John. Oh, stop it. <laughs> yes, you are. Stop it. Yes, you are, John. Oh, there's only this. You guys, okay. That's making me super uncomfortable, and thank you. I appreciate John that. John is a rock star. <laughs> Can we close with something else besides that, guys? <laughs> okay. I yes. love it. I yes. love it. Actually, actually, we can. Um, unless I'm relying on Facebook, I believe today's Eddie's birthday. There you go. Where's Eddie? Happy birthday, young man. Thank you very much. Yes, I'll, thank you thank you for that. And what a great way to close today's call. Okay, it's time to get on the phone. It's time to go out and knock on doors. It's time to lead generate. It's time to do whatever it is you do in order to generate business. Have 20 conversations, add one person to your database today. Get face to face with one person today who's thinking of selling their home or thinking of buying their home. Create smart plans and command in order to follow up, in order to create emotional proximity. Follow up forever. And forever means forever. Reject rejection. No is not a word that lives in your vocabulary. And write five handwritten personal notes today. Make it a great day, everybody. Thank Bye, you. John. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.